So these are our October buyout horses that came in this week. Um, as you can tell from the footage, if you go and look at it, Dr. Lydia was not here because she was on a different errand for the, the organization that hopefully will turn out to be great for us, but we missed her that first day. Um, so the first few horses, you'll just hear my voice droning on, and then days two and three, she'll... And it was a really, horses. really hard first day. Dr. Gina did a great job making sure that the horses that were in the most critical shape were seen first. So it gets slightly less depressing as the numbers go on, but that first day was rough, was our poor rough. team. So we can start with the first horse. Oh, she doesn't have her name up there yet. We don't have it on the sheet either. I know that people have been putting in their, their names for these horses, these babies. Um, this is one of the two eight-month-old Percheron babies that we got. They were both fillies. She, um, I think, was the worst off, but she had her left front fetlock was already dropped all the way to the ground, and she had bilateral hind limb uh, club hooves, and we gave her some banamine, and this is what happened after we gave her the banamine. She laid down and started eating the hay, mm. so she was really painful, but when she felt good, she relaxed. Um, but because of the advanced malformation from irresponsible breeding, she and her sister both got the last act of kindness, but we'll talk about her sister next. So next horse. And this is her sister. She looks worse, but once she got banamine, she was happy to keep standing and moving oh around. My but goodness. yeah. Look at her fetlock, Dr. Gina. I haven't yeah. seen these pictures. Yeah, it was pretty devastating oh to watch her goodness. get off the trailer. Yeah. So this is what irresponsible breeding for sure looks like with congenital That's malformation, horrible. deformation problems. We've seen a few Percheron babies come through that look just like these. I, I suspect they're either the same breeding stock or the same farm um, that we've seen before. But mm. yeah, she had pretty much all four fetlocks on the ground. She was really cute. They both were super cute. Yeah, she was the other eight month old. So we think they were sisters. But last act of kindness was the only thing we could do for these two girls. They would just keep growing and getting more painful. So yeah, next horse. Ah, they called him Jack. Blackjack. Oh yeah, there's my blackjack. He's our, based on teeth, seven year old gelding standard bred. Um, He's a really good boy. He's great for pokes. Um, we did rads of him, um, but he mainly has some arthritis kind of stuff going on. But um, we gave him some pain medication, and then we gave him all the things, and he's out in a pasture. He looks terrible yeah. to be a seven-year-old. Yeah. Looking at him, we thought he was much older but when we actually looked at his teeth, yeah. so we're hoping that proper diet, managing his feet, because his feet were overgrown or are overgrown, hopefully managing that and good nutrition will get him back to a adoptable body condition score and where he'll be happy. This is our 20 year old standard bred mare. She is in the 10 acre right now. She's really, really sweet, really awesome. Um, Dr. Lydia got to meet her today one on one. She hates flies <laughs> and her tail is very short. But she loves people. We covered in her and fly spray. Yeah. Um, she does have an enlarged left hind leg around the hawk. We took radiographs of it and it's really, really old OA. Um, so it's stabilized, it's no longer reactive, but the proliferation is there and it will be there forever. But um, she seems pretty stable and sound. So we're hoping that just joint injections, doing her teeth, getting her on some good nutrition, getting her feet done will help her be more comfortable and hopefully she can get to her forever home. But she got all the things and was turned out in the two acre. And this is um, Classic Mirage. We looked her up based on her brand. Um, she's a 20-year-old thoroughbred mare, or a tattoo, sorry, she had a lip tattoo. And that's how we came up with her name, because that's what her register name is. Unfortunately, once she got off the trailer and started eating some food, she laid down and did not get back up. We gave her pain medication, and she just, we asked her to get up, and she wouldn't get up. 
Um, her heart rate was elevated when she was down. Her gut sounds were decreased. Yeah. She had a heart murmur that was pretty raging, five to six out of six when she was down, and she already started to develop a toxic line. When that happens in horses, it means something is causing endotoxemia or a toxic shower. So her, her body was already having systemic bacterial problems. So there was nothing else we could do but give her the last act of kindness. It was it would be too much to ask her body to continue on, so. I don't know any of the details, but somebody on our team looked this mare up and she won like hundreds of thousands of dollars and then had like 10 foals for whoever owned her and then they dumped her. It's really inexcusable. She was really lovely. Paxton is cute. Paxton was our 22 year old uh, gelding Tennessee walking horse. Looking at him, you wouldn't have guessed he was a Tennessee walker because he was so fluffy, but he had hirsutism, which is usually a classic sign of Cushing's. We didn't actually test his blood for Cushing's, but he pretty much had all the signs of it. He also had a pretty raging murmur. It was a four out of six, um, and it was muffled on the right. Um, he had mucopurulent nasal discharge, and he was also really unsteady on his feet. So paresis versus paralysis, whether he was neurologic or just that weak, we don't know for sure, but he was definitely being a walker and he had his tail tendon cut and things like that. He's more prone to caudal equina kind of damage and things like that. But he was given the last act of kindness because of his unsteadiness and his condition and his advanced age. He just wasn't super comfortable. He doesn't look this thin in that picture and I didn't see him, but Dr. Dina body condition scored him at a two out of nine. So yeah. very, very, very thin. He was very agility. fluffy, but if you ran your hands over him, he was pretty, pretty skeletal. This is, oh, they called her Nutmeg, Aww. but her registered name was Ballantine. Oh. It was really cute. She was a cute girl. She was 19, um, standard red mare. She had mastitis in one of her Teats. She had obviously been used as a brood mare, and this was the end of her brood mare career. Um, she had increased inspiratory noises. She had an abnormal tail base, so it's kind of hard to see in the picture. She looks like she might just be tucked under, but we took radiographs, and she had a pretty catastrophic fracture um, past her uh, pelvic area and sacrum that had healed, and she was her tail was like pretty much like this. And when you palpated over that area, she was really, really painful. I mean, it's, that's still the spine. So even yeah. though that's a very, very end of the spine, she still had a fractured spine. I'm sure yeah. she was in so much pain. So knowing that and that she was used as a brood mare is pretty heartbreaking. Um, she was a really sweet face. She was a real sweet girl. So the last act of kindness was what we all decided on for her just because she was so painful. We didn't want her to get into a situation where she'd get down and not get back up or be so painful she couldn't move kind of thing so mm. nutmeg oh clarity that's what they decided to call her her registered name is cheyenne warrior she was only 11 but she had uh, kyphosis if you can look at the mm. image you can see her spine it pretty significantly mm -hmm. raises up and down and she also had pain associated with that see this line right here yeah that goes Oop. It might be too much zoom. So see this line where it goes up and over right here? It's now. Oh, it's... There we go. Yeah, this, this humped area right here is what Dr. Gina is talking about. So whether that was trauma or malformation through her genetics, like those little sweet Percheron babies, um, I don't know for sure since we don't get histories with most of our horses that come through buyout. So... Based on that and how painful she was around palpation of that area, even as a pasture pet, we were worried about her quality of life, even though she was only 11. So the last act of kindness was the best thing we could do for her at that point. She was real cute. <laughs> Aw, Gemma, that's what they could have called her. That's sweet. Her register name was Artemis Pine, <laughs> which I thought was super cute. I really cute. like her too. Yeah, Gemma's a sweet name too. Um, she's 17 year old standard bred mare. We body condition scored her at three out of nine. Um, she was, she was spicy. That's what I wrote on my paper. <laughs> she definitely tried to bite many a people. She was neurologic in the hind. When you watched yeah. her move, she seemed like she didn't really know where her feet were in space. Yeah. So 
based on her neurologic exam and the, th the worry about her getting herself in a situation where she would be scared and in pain, get down, not be able to get back up or fall on somebody or something mm -hmm. else. Um, the last act of kindness mm. was the best thing we could do for her. We see a lot of neurologic horses here at Horse Plus. I don't think I've seen a single true neurologic case in private practice, but neurologic disease, there are a few differentials that might be okay, but for the most part, kind of the top 15 differentials are all grave to poor prognoses, and, and a lot of them pose an infectious disease risk to other horses or to humans. So you guys have heard us talk about a lot of other cases. We do our best to find out what's going on with these cases, but in a lot of, in a lot of cases, we can rule out anything that could possibly result in an acceptable quality of life for a horse just with an exam. It's really unfortunate. It is. Oh. Well, I called her Spirit. Her registered name was You Raise Me Up. Oh. Um, she was a 19-year-old standard bred mare. She was also a 3 out of 9 body condition score. Mm. It's, it looks deceiving if you look at the image of her, but she was also used as a brood mare. So a lot of the times these brood mares will have really weak abdominal muscles, and so they look like they're well-fleshed, and they're really not because um, their body's giving everything to all their foals, the repeated foalings and things like that but she was super sweet um, her left front hoof was cracked and really long toe mm. but and her right front carpus was enlarged and we took um, radiographs of that carpus it was a healed fracture mm. and she wasn't really wanting to bear weight on it she was constantly holding it like this so just because of how painful she was and her advanced age even putting her on chronic like NSAIDs or pain management that's not benign those things do cause um, or can cause damage to kidneys, liver, things like that. And she was already showing signs of being super painful even with banamine, so. So often I feel like those cases, whoever has the mare is like, oh, I'll just keep her around until she foals. And then as soon as they wean the foal, they just yeah. get rid of the dam, which is bit. really unfair because I'm sure she was very painful. She was really good for pokes, hauled her broken, super sweet. Asked you, if you, she would do anything you asked her to do and knowing that that was her personality and this is a condition she came in was really heartbreaking. So the last act of kindness on a good day was the best thing we could give her. Super cute. <laughs> this silly boy, <laughs> Waylon. Okay, so this is the start of the second half of the group. Poor Dr. Gina and our team, that first set of horses was tough. Um, they ended a lot of suffering. So Waylon is a very good boy. Um, he's only eight years old. Unfortunately, he also has a fracture in his carpus, his left front carpus. However, it's not a complete fracture. And clinically, he's pretty comfortable um, and weight bearing. So at his age, but especially because he's not painful. So pain is the really big thing for horses. If we think we can get you through something and we think you can have a decent quality of life, we're gonna try. Um, Waylon will likely only be cleared to be a, a pasture pet. He probably won't be sound to be ridden, but he also has really, really overgrown feet, um, very stinky bad thrush. He had some dried blood on the back of his left hind leg and his left hind leg is kind of puffy and swollen, but radiographs of that leg were pretty normal and on palpation, I think that he's just kind of got a cellulitis going on them in that leg. I'm hopeful for this guy that he will be sound enough to have a happy, comfortable life. And he's a, just a really good boy. He's built like a little box. You can't tell from this picture, but he's kind of like yeah, wide stocky. base stance and stocky um, and I actually saw him get to trot so he's comfortable enough that he willingly trotted after his friend in the pasture and um, he's just he's a good boy okay you can go on to the next one. Oh, and this is back to the first day I guess they have him in numerical order oh yeah so you didn't get to you asked, you saw pictures of this boy but you didn't get to see him oh. in person um, he was super cute he was about a four-year-old boy um, oh, gelding. this is the giant wound. Yeah, you mm. can't see it in this image, but his right front and his biceps muscles, they're completely filleted open. Um, and he was self-mutilating, biting at it. It was really bothering him. And so we were going to try 
and address his wounds and have him be one of our medical patients. But his personality, he was so afraid of people, even the slightest touch on his nose to try and put a halter on, he completely flipped over backwards. He hit his pole, he got himself stuck. He almost broke his legs. Um, so because of all that, it, was, it would be way too stressful and we'd have to keep him sedated long-term for the severity of those wounds to treat them. I opened the, I was on an air, I was in between flights on an airplane and Dr. Gina sent me pictures and I opened it and the guy sitting next to me was like, Ooh. <laughs> it was a, a pretty big wound. And you looked, you probed the wound, right? It was yeah, um, pretty deep and necrotic. Yeah, it, it's, he smelled like death. Um, we were really hopeful we could try, but um, the last act of kindness was the best thing we could do for him. Just to quality of life would have been really horrible for him having to have people's hands on him all the time. But when he was gone, I didn't want to try and mess with him when he was still aware. But once he was gone, I probed it, and it, there were deep pockets circumferentially on either side, up through the muscles, and then down below. So. And the muscles like themselves. Larger than football sized affected area, would you say? Oh, yeah. Um, it was pretty much all his biceps were affected. Mm. And, and the muscles themselves were already necrotic, black, mm. breaking down with yummy, yummy bacteria. Mm. So he was super cute. We really wanted to help him. That was the right call, though. You did help him. Yes, but. He was so young, it would have been really lovely if yeah. we could have helped him. You can move on. Oh, you didn't get to see him either. Oh, Boeing, Aww. that's a cute name that for him. Name. He was our 23-year-old uh, gelding draft cross, okay. and he's the one that had a really mm. purulent discharge from, like, just caudal to the throat latch area. Mm. We took radiographs. It wasn't communicating with any of the major structures that we'd worry about, like his guttural pouch or his cranial cervical vertebra. Um, but he did have mucoprelate nasal discharge. He had increased lung sounds, and he just looked like he didn't feel very good. We gave him some banamine, and it helped him a little bit, but he still wasn't mm. super comfortable. Um, so given the advanced stages in his lungs and how painful he was even with banamine, we decided that the last act of kindness was the best mm. thing for him, but he was a real sweet boy. I liked him a lot. <laughs> Florence, she was super cute. Um, you didn't really get to see anything about her, but Tawny watched her move when she got off the trailer um, and noticed that her hip looked kind of funky. So when we got to looking at her, she actually had a fractured hip mm. and she was only two. Mm. Um, so she was um, given the last act of kindness because of the instability. And it's really hard to stabilize a fracture mm. of the hip or pelvis. Um, and she was not really amenable to that either. She would not have been happy in a stall. And she was just so, so painful. Um, so yeah. She was gorgeous. This is our 20 year old gelding standard bread. I think we put him out in the 10 acre mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, this boy is quite thin. We body condition scored him at three out of nine. He has some increased bilateral respiratory noises. So I think he's had something chronic respiratory going on and we floated his teeth today. He had a severe hook and wave mouth. He does have a possible furcation, which is a fancy word for the teeth with the multiple roots. You never want to be able to see the top part of the U. And on x-rays, the bottom left first premolar looks like it's compromised. I couldn't move it with my fingers today. And I did the best I could with the rest of his mouth, but he's going to need more dental work and probably proactive dental work throughout the rest of his life. So we were able to correct a lot of those dental issues today. And he has turned out um, in the 10 acre and he got all of the things. He is wearing shoes on all four feet. So he was still, someone was still shoeing him. And he's a very good boy. He's not the most respectful of personal space, but he's very sweet and very food motivated. <laughs> Oh, you didn't get to see her. You can see in this Ooh, picture her. DSLD. Yeah. Ooh. She was a 30 year old mare. It oh, says 28 man. up there, but we said 30 when we actually looked at her teeth. Um, 
Nora. She's an Arab cross and she had muffled sounds on the right when I was listening to her lungs. Um, so anytime we say that, when you're listening to the heart sounds, you want it to be a crisp sound. And if it's ever muffled, then you're worried about fluid or something preventing you from being able to clearly ascult the heart. And she's clearly not a fat horse, so it wouldn't be that. Um, so that's always a concern that there's something cardiac and respiratory related systemically wrong. Um, she had some mammary development, so she was also probably used as a brood mare. And then just once the baby was weaned, was taken away. And then her very yeah. severe DSLD and it had progressed to such a point that that's really painful. It's degenerative. There's when it's at this the mare point. should never have been bred. Yeah, there's really her nothing we can is do. Really, she's got club hooves in the front, and then yeah. see this angle. See how this is like parallel to the ground. So, for those of you who watch Horse Plus's shows, you hear us talk about DSLD a lot. It stands for Deep Suspensory Limb Desmitis. It's chronic, progressive, incurable. In earlier stages, it can't be managed, but when you get angle changes as low as this, and you can see even on the graininess of this picture how puffy that joint is, it's very painful. It's also a congenital trait, so you should never breed a horse with that confirmation because the likelihood that the, their foals are gonna also have confirmation that predisposes them to pain is pretty high, that poor yeah. thing. And horses, the way they're built, and humans too, every, everything is connected. So some change that might seem minor when looking at an image, if you don't really know horses very well, just that angle change in the fetlocks, you see how straight her hocks are, and then that mm -hmm. puts strain on the stifle or her true knee, and that goes all the way up to the hips, and it totally malaligns everything else. So the pain starts in one place, then it goes all over the body. So systemically and locally, that's really, really painful. Yeah. So the last act of kindness was the best thing we could do for her. You can see in that image how heavily developed her mammaries are. Yeah. Poor ma'am. Poor girl. This is a guy Waffles. you did today. That's a cute I name. I love the name Waffles. Um, he has very flubbity lips. He's very cute. Um, Waffles is only 20 years old. I'm, I, I'm, I double checked his age like four times because he's extremely thin. Um, and draft horses tend to stay healthier, older. Most of the draft horses we get that look like walking skeletons are 30 years old with no teeth. Um, Waffles still has pretty decent teeth. I floated them today. He had some minor points, but he has very nice looking teeth. And he did have some abnormalities on his blood work some indications of chronic inflammation, um, some indications that he may have early stage liver disease and or chronic muscle damage, but he's so thin that we could have that elevation just because his body could be in such a state of starvation that it's trying to digest its own muscles. So I'm really hopeful for this boy. He's very, very good boy. Um, we are a little concerned about refeeding. We body condition scored him at two out of nine, but he's got a a, a great chance and a wonderful personality. I do think he probably has some pelvic limb lameness, but on palpation and at a walk, he seems comfortable. So whether or not he'll have any future as a riding horse or whether he'll just be a pasture friend, we're not sure about that yet, but he's a very good boy. And um, I actually feel kind of badly today. We turned them out in the 10 acre and he went out and um, he just lay down in the sunshine and I think he was just taking a nap, but I stared at him and then I was worried and I went out there and I made him get up. He got right up and was like, what do you need? And I was like, were you just taking a nap? And I just made you get up. Horses don't always lay down, but um, this poor boy just seemed really tired. So hopefully he pulls through, but so far he's doing great. Wow, she looks so much thinner in person than she looks in this picture. Yeah, she kind of looks like a little deep feathered chicken. <laughs> this man, this so mare, cute is one of the thinnest horses I've seen, which yeah. every horse we see at Horse Plus almost is very thin. You could palpate all of the wings of her vertebrae from the very top of her pole all the way down her neck. I mean, she was so, so emaciated. She did have some dental pathology, but we were really wanting to pull her through until we got her blood work and she had multiple indications that she had multiple major organ systems affected. 
Um, her immune system was not functioning. There were indications that her bone marrow wasn't producing adequately. She had very, very low white cell count, low platelet count. Um, and then she also had some liver value. I don't have her blood work in front of me, but when we looked at it and we said her teeth weren't really the worst. That's her blood work. Um, yeah, muscle damage, liver, no functional immune system. Um, and she looked clinically hydrated, but her blood work showed that she was severely dehydrated. And this was 24 hours after having adequate access to water. So did, do we age her differently? We have her down as 20 plus. This poor mare, something major was going on inside her body. And she also, I think, was just ready to go. Sometimes they just tell you, you know? She was very sweet. Yeah. And she would come right up to you. She loved taking treats from Dr. Lydia today. This little mare is 19 or 20. She is adorable. She is, has pretty significant osteoarthritis on her withers and some pain on palpation, but I think that she could be comfortable enough as a pasture pet. Sometimes when we palpate, we're like, wow, this horse cannot ever lay down comfortably. This mare's pain seemed moderate to me, even though her radiographs were pretty bad. Um, she had a, a swollen left hind leg and she's a, a bit short strided and her feet had major, major neglect. However, um, I'm hopeful that we can get her her feet fixed and, and get her better comfortable. She did have some hooks on her teeth. So we did her dental today as well. And we did some blood work on her. She had some elevated eosinophils, which indicate often parasites. It can be an allergic reaction. It also can be a sign of inflammation. So her blood work wasn't completely normal. Um, some of her kidney values were kind of marginal, but She's only 10. I'm really hopeful that we can pull her through and she is turned out in our 10 acre pasture to decompress. Um, Skye is about 25 years old based on her teeth. She is a standard bred. Um, her right eye seemed to be enlarged more than the right or more than the left. Um, so possible increase in pressure within the globe. Um, so that's something we need to evaluate later. Um, she has, she walks with left hind that goes to midline. So we're kind of worried about the way she ambulates a little bit and you can kind of see the way she holds it. It's kind of an odd angle in this picture. Um, she's a little hot, off on the left hind. Um, she has a lucency change when we took radiographs in the coffin bone. So it could be like a cyst or there could be something else going on. So we're a little bit worried about that um, on her left front. I think you already did a dental on her, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You said she's missing her lower right third molar. She has reduced. Severe. Oh. Dr. Dean is trying to read my handwriting. <laughs> <laughs> she reduced a severe hook. That's what it is. Um, so we do have quality of life concerns for her, but we're gonna turn her, we turned her out in the 10 acre after she got all of her vaccines and dewormer to see how well she does in quarantine over the next 30 days, if she puts on weight, if she doesn't, or if she just tells us that she's super painful. Um, but we're hopeful. Sky and Waffles are in love. <laughs> They're really cute. She got turned out before he did and she waited for him right at the gate. And then as soon as he got turned out, they went way out in the pasture together. It's very sweet. Yeah, so we're hoping. We have a lot of hopefuls, but you can go ahead. just gotta see how they do. Ooh, Maggie is a bit spicy. Um, Maggie's a little red pony mare. She's gated. Um, she's about 15 years old. She does not appreciate anyone doing things with her that she does not want done. But we were able to do a full exam with her. Um, she's got some vision impairment in her left eye and she is coughing pretty badly. She's got some elevated lung sounds. She's got some really bad mucopurulent nasal discharge. And um, we have her quarantined by herself, but with within an area where she can see and hear her friends. 
we took some samples of her nasal discharge and once we have those results back from the lab, hopefully we'll be able to get her turned back out with friends, but we wanna make sure that she doesn't have something that's gonna cause a problem for the other horses. So we're hopeful she's young enough um, that hopefully we can get her to adoption. She definitely has some behavioral issues. She kind of paws and strikes. Um, we thought she was halter broken <laughs> and I put a halter and lead rope on her and I was gonna lead her out. And um, she might not actually be halter broken. She kind of dragged me a, a little bit and we had to close the gate, but she's a beautiful girl. She has a little bit of early DSLD in one of her hind legs. So it, that's not great, but it is mild and it's only one of the legs. So have some concerns, but we're hopeful. Aww. Epic, that's a cute name. Her registered name was Northern Bonnet. Um, we aged her at about 22. She's a standard bred mare. Um, based on her brand and stuff, when we looked her up, she was 22. We thought she was much older than that. We thought she was 30. Um, she had muffled heart sounds on the right. Again, that sound in a very thin horse is, is one of our red flags. Um, she was really good for pokes. She was sweet, easy to catch. She had pain on palpation of her hawks and pain over her withers. Um, she had really severe rain rot. You can even see it in this image. Um, she was very upright in her hawks also. Um, so we had concerns for her for refeeding. And I think when we took weather reds, she had, yeah, mm -hmm. she had really severe plus, plus, plus OA yeah. of her spine. And we were really worried about her getting down and rolling and causing a fracture. Yeah, man, this mare, we made a call on this morning. Um, we were really hopeful that we could get her some more time. Ultimately, it was the radiographs. She had horrible teeth. Um, she had a fractured tooth, so she would have needed dental surgery, but her level of pain on her whole back and her hind legs was significant and not responsive to pain medication. And I, I just don't think it would have been fair of her. Dr. Gina and I talked about it, you know, it's pretty tough. We have to take the subjective assessment of palpation and then the objective information from an x-ray and we have to make our best guess about whether or not a horse can live a comfortable life. I think this horse was likely uncomfortable just standing. Um, she would not have been able to comfortably lay down or roll or do any, any of the normal horse things. But she also was extremely thin. She was another BCS of one. So it's pretty rare that we get a body condition score that's a true one. And this mare and the other mare um, that we talked about earlier were both, you could see almost every bone in their skeleton. So she was given the last act of kindness. She was a very good girl. Oh, Wonkini? Yeah. She was a real cute mare, but um, when we looked at her, she was about 19 based on her teeth, uh, paint mare, bald face with a little medicine hat. Super cute, super sweet, but um, in the footage, if you go and look at it, her right eye, the lower lid had either been resected surgically, she also had a mass on that third eyelid, mm -hmm. or she had some kind of traumatic event. And also on the top of her eye, there was a wound that either, like a surgical removal had dehissed and caused that, or another part of what we suspect was squamous cell carcinoma cancer was coming out from the globe itself and coming up the face. So yeah, she had a lot of masses that we were pretty sure were squamous cell carcinoma around that right eye and some on the left. She also had other wounds. You can't see it in this image. She had other wounds that were really suspicious of squamous cell and white areas on her body. So um, we did blood work. I don't have it, the results here. Oh wait, do I? It's, yeah. um, it sounds like we're guessing, which we are on the squamous cell, but if you have a, an, a, an animal in their teens with no pigment around the eye mm -hmm. with ulcerated, pigmented, irregular, highly vascular masses, there's an extremely high likelihood that it's neoplastic. And because she had masses in both of those eyes, we would have had to remove both of those eyes which would have been painful. She also had a mass under her tail mm -hmm. um, and, and she was severely emaciated. Did we even, we missed her BCS. Sometimes we miss things. 
she was probably between a one and a two, but when you have cancer, often that manifests initially as weight loss. So the likelihood that she had additional neoplastic processes internally, as well as the ones we could see ex externally was high. So we could have removed both of her eyes and sent those off. Uh, but even if we had done that, I would have been very concerned about adopting her out to a family knowing that she probably had tumors elsewhere. Yeah. And she re received the last act of kindness. She's our 20 year old standard bred mare. Yeah. yeah, she's one of the ones we looked at. She has a little lump on her jaw yeah. that's probably like a scar tissue kind of thing. Um, we came up this morning to do dentals on the horses that we didn't get to this week. And she was one of the ones that we made a top priority today and did radiographs. Um, and she had her left front when we took radiographs of it, the bone that makes up the pastern radiographically had like a hollow tube inside of it. So the bone is becoming like a hollow tree. Like 60, like 60 plus percent of the bone was a cyst versus. Yeah, she had, and on the DP view, so when we go from front to like through the front of the limb and look at that we could see it a little bit better and there was like some bone reactivity that was really suspicious crossing the joint and with the way that all that looked together we were really concerned about osteosarcoma right yeah yeah, yeah she was at high risk of a pathologic fracture which is the term for your body has a disease process usually it's bone cancer but the bone gets so weak. Women with osteoporosis have pathologic fractures. Your bone gets so weak and brittle that it's a, at a high risk of a fracture. Uh, but this mare also had, that was just her left front. Mm -hmm. She had abnormalities in the right front, the left hind, her withers and her mouth as well. Yeah. And her blood work was abnormal. So we were really concerned about her potentially walking and then fracturing that bone. And then it would, oh, it would that makes me cringe. Just it was the biggest cyst I've ever seen in any animal. Yeah. So. It was a big cyst. Yeah, so immediately when we saw all of those things together, the last act of kindness was the best thing we could do for her to prevent her from having a really, really painful traumatic fracture. She got a lot of cookies. She did get a lot of She's a real good girl. I think, I think she got almost a whole bag. Yeah. Oh, you didn't get to see. No, I didn't see her. This one. This was, oh, they called her Mercy. It's a good name. She was a good girl. Um, Mercy was our 20 year old Belgian mare. Um, we gave her a body condition score three out of nine. She was quite thin for a girl her age. Um, she had a really small left eye, which we call microophthalmic. She was blind in that eye. Um, her right front, you can't really see it in this image, but her right front foot was a much smaller foot and a different shape than all of her other feet. Mm -hmm. And she was limping on it. So we gave her 10 cc's of banamine to see. Maybe, maybe she just hurt herself getting off the trailer or something like that. But even with 10 cc's of banamine, she was really limping and really mm -hmm. painful on it. Um, so Tawny grabbed her at the very end of the first day. and was like, hey, Dr. Murray, come look at this. So I came and looked. And yeah, she even with 10 cc's of banamine didn't mm -hmm. touch her. So. She and was foundered. Yeah, she was foundering and her foot, she had increased digital pulses and Aww. heat. So last act of kindness was the last thing we could do for her. Not to bore people who watch this a lot. Founder is um, also called laminitis. It's a severe inflammatory process of the foot and it has a bunch of different causes. Sometimes it's metabolic related it can happen in a support limb. So if you have lameness on one foot, the other foot can um, end up in that shape. And by the time it's, if you catch it early, there's a lot of things you can do to alleviate founder. It's certainly not a death sentence, um, but once sinking and rotation and chronic processes have happened, it's very, very difficult to get those horses comfortable again. Yeah. He was our last boy, Aww. this is Promise, it's 30, once we looked at his teeth again, we called him 25, but 25 to 30 year old gelding quarter horse. He was a body condition score of two out of nine. Um, he was a little mm. flea bitten gray. He just looked like he felt bad. Um, when we were examining him, he had a really sizable mass on his thyroid. Um, I didn't 
I think I found anything on his tail. I think you might have found, found one small mass somewhere, a tiny nodule, yeah, it was a caudal yeah. tail. So, and when you looked at his teeth, he was missing his maxillary premolar, his left was worn to the gum line, so along with his teeth, the nodule on his thyroid and being a gray boy with some masses, yeah, he also had a, a heart murmur that you could only hear on the right side. So that would be your tricuspid valve or unless there was some kind of like PDA or something like that, but. Poor old man. Yeah, he had a lot of things going on that made him not feel very good. So given his age and the advanced stages of all the things he had going on, the last act of kindness was the best thing we could do for him. We are thankful that we can alleviate that pain and suffering and that we can give these animals uh, an ethical end of life. Um, it's really unfair to them that they don't get the retirements that they deserve. And it feels unfair to be the humans that get horses that are past the point that we can fix them. Dr. Gina and I wanna, we wanna fix things. That's why we became veterinarians. Um, so we try to focus on the positives on the, on the ones that we can save. We have a big adoption event coming up and hopefully a lot of our horses will find their forever homes. So keep focusing on that.